In the last lecture, I explained what are static and what are dynamic systems and there we solved four problems and out of those four problems, two were examples and the remaining two was for our practice purpose. Now in this lecture, we will continue with our practice but first I want to explain one important point related to static and dynamic systems. Static systems are also known as memoryless systems. They are also known as memoryless systems and dynamic systems on the other hand are also known as system with memory. Now we will try to understand why do we call static systems memoryless systems and why do we call dynamic systems system with memory. We will use the definition of static and dynamic systems for this. We already know Static systems are those systems in which the output is only dependent on the present input. And as we are only using the present input, there is no need to store the previous and future values of input. And as we are not storing anything, there is no need of memory element. And that's why the system is known as memoryless system. On the other hand, dynamic systems are those systems in which the output is dependent on past or future values of input at any one instant of time. So we do require the past or future values of input and we can have it only if we can store it. And to store anything we need the memory element therefore dynamic systems are a system with memory. This is important point because in your examinations you may see memoryless system and system with memory instead of static and dynamic systems. So don't confuse yourself, they are nothing but static and dynamic systems. Now we will solve the third practice problem. In the third practice problem, yt is equal to x 2t. And now we will follow the same steps we followed in the last lecture. We will make t equal to 0. And then we have y0 equal to x2 multiplied by 0. So we have 0 here also. And we can clearly see the output depends on the present input. The output depends on the present input and you will say the system is static in nature. But your answer will be incorrect because if you remember the last lecture I told you in many cases when t is equal to 0 you will find the nature of system as a static but when you put t equal to some other value not equal to 0 you will find the system is dynamic. So it's good to check for other values of t also let's take t equal to minus 1 we will have y minus 1 equal to x minus 2 now you can clearly see the present value of output is dependent on the past value of input so the system output is dependent on the past values of input also and thus the system generating this relationship between output and input is dynamic in nature so you have your answer but I will extend our analysis a little bit more. Let's have t equal to 1. So we will have y1 equal to x2. And in this case the present output is dependent on the future input. So the system output is also dependent on the future values of input. So we have all the three cases. The system output is dependent on present input dependent on past values of input and also dependent on the future values of input. And we do require the memory element to store the past and future values of input. So it's a system with memory and we already know system with memory is a dynamic system. So our answer is dynamic system. We can easily generalize the results we have in this problem. When t is equal to 0 the output which is the present output yt is dependent on the present value of input and when t is less than 0 this means t is negative then the present output yt is dependent on the past values of input and when t is greater than 0 this means positive the present output is dependent on the future the future values of input. So this is all you need to know about the problem number three. We have detailed analysis of the problem and there is one thing you must know related to the outputs. 
Like inputs, we have future, past and present outputs. For example, if the relation is like this, y t plus 1 is equal to x t plus 1 and you make t equal to 0. In this scenario, we have y of 1 equal to x of 1. t is equal to 0. This is the present time instant. But here we have y1. This means this is the future output. x1 is the future input. So the future output is dependent on the future input and the time instant is also same. So we can say that the system producing this relationship is static in nature. You can have the other example also y t minus 2 equal to x t minus 2 and in this case when t is equal to 0 you will have y minus 2 equal to x minus 2 and now you can see we have the past output and the past output is dependent on the past input and also at the same time instant. So the system is again is static in nature and in both these cases the relationship is not given in terms of present output. In this case the output is past output, in this case the output is future output. So I hope this point is clear to you and now we will discuss the fourth problem. In the fourth problem y t is equal to x minus t. Now there is no need to perform all these calculations in the fourth problem because we have derived one property of a static and dynamic systems. Whenever there is time scaling, here we have time scaling and whenever there is time scaling, the system is going to be dynamic in nature. And in this case also there is time scaling, there is reversal and reversal is nothing but the special case of time scaling. So there is time scaling and we can directly say that the system is going to be dynamic. We want to reduce our calculations and for that we can use the properties directly. Now let's move to the fifth problem. Here y t is equal to integration minus infinity to t x tau d tau. If you know the graphical integration, you can directly answer this problem. In graphical integration, we start from minus infinity and we increase the upper limit of the integration. This means we increase the time t slowly and because of this there will be increment or decrement in the net area. Now this increment or decrement depends on the past values of input and thus this is a dynamic system. I will explain this by the help of one example. Let's take the signal waveform like this. It is a finite duration signal minus 1, 1, 0. This is 2 and we are integrating the signal from minus infinity to infinity and how we integrate we slowly start from minus infinity and we increase the upper limit of integration that is t and let's say t is equal to minus 1 so the net area or the integration from minus infinity to t is equal to 0 this value is dependent on the past values of input now let's make t equal to 0 so the total area the net area or the integration from minus infinity to 0 will be equal to this area which is equal to 2. Now let's say our present time, our present time is equal to 1. So we have made t equal to 1 and we are integrating from minus infinity to 1. The net area, the net area will be equal to 2, this old area plus this new area which is also equal to 2. So the net area or the integration is equal to 4. So you can clearly see the area or the integration at present time is very much dependent on the previous values. Therefore, whenever you have integration, the system is going to be dynamic. The system is going to be dynamic in nature. This is one important problem. And now we will move to the sixth problem in this lecture. In the sixth problem, yt is equal to x sine t. This is the problem and we will repeat the same steps of problem number 3. We will first make t equal to 0. So we have y0 equal to x sine 0. Sine 0 is equal to 0. So y0 is equal to x0. You will say the system is static. 
But again, to have the complete surety, we will check the nature of system at other instants of time. Let's make t equal to pi. So we have y pi equal to x sine pi. Sine pi is equal to 0. So we have y pi is equal to 3.14. So we have y 3.14 equal to x 0. So this is the present output when t is equal to pi or 3.14 we have the present output and the input is x0 so relative to 3.14 0 is past instant of time so the present output is dependent on the past input and therefore the system is dynamic in nature the system is dynamic in nature so this is all for this lecture now let's move to the homework problems I have three homework problems for you in the first homework problem, yt is equal to xt plus 5 plus 6. In the second homework problem, yt is equal to xt multiplied with sine 2t. And in the third homework problem, third homework problem, yt is equal to e raised to power minus 2 xt. Find out the nature of system in the three problems if they are static or dynamic and once you have your answer post it in comment section and I will end this lecture here see you in the next one.